Good early morning, guys. Today we are going to be showcasing using uh, different virtualization, and we're going to be launching uh, a different distro of Linux. So let's get started right away here. Uh, basically, you're just going to go ahead and open up a command prompt. It, I think it might need administrator administrator i don't know maybe not but anyway let's go ahead and uh i've run cmd as administrator and i've got this uh this uh command with the argument going here to specify that we want uh basically just like a gig of memory we want to use this um this linux iso we're going to boot and uh, so yeah, just uh, smash that enter key and right away you're going to see this. Uh, before you boot it though, hit the tab key, hit the uh, the space bar, type cow underscore space size equals 3G enter. So what that's going to do is change the, the amount of space allocated to your, uh, your cow space to three gigabytes. <clears throat> now, three gigabytes is going to give you more space, so that way we can install all what we need to. For example, throughout this, we will be installing Nginx as a web server, so that way we begin listening on port 80. Uh, we will be we will be um, <clears throat> getting GCC, which in uh, in this Linux distribution includes G++. Um, we will also be getting, uh, I think it's SFML. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's SFML. But anyways, th throughout this, all that we're going to be doing is making a really simple, a real basic port scanner, and it's just going to check port 80. Now, I know that this is simple. It's not hard at all. Anyone can do this. I just want to show you how it's done so that way you know how making a port scanner can look. In addition, this uh, this library supports multi-threading. Uh, so, for example, if you wanted to scan multiple ports on, on multiple different systems at a given time, it's, it's totally up to you how you run things and, and how you develop them. But this is just going to give you a quick... A quick, real little glimpse of how port scanners can be developed using libraries. So you don't have to code everything from scratch. And uh, so let's start off with with just a, a Pacman um, config change. So I'm going to do nano etc Pacman uh, conf, and we are going to look for sig level. And where it says sig level. We're going to just like replace this required crap with never. Now, this is not a production system. If it were a production system, I'd probably not necessarily be doing this because um, keys are not bad, but I'm going to be doing things and I don't need this Pac-Man key signature crap to get in my way. So we're going to do Pac-Man SY. Uh, we're going to start off with just getting Nginx. That's a, just a web server. And once we get this Nginx um, downloaded, it's going to ask us yes, no type thing. And I, I'm just going to I'm going to hit the uh, shift Y, just give it an uppercase Y to go ahead and, and continue on with installing Nginx. Then we could use uh, system CTL to start it if we wanted to. But we're, we're not going to do that just yet. We need to get we need to get a couple other things. So, for example, I need to get GCC. So there's uh, GCC, and what this contains is uh, your it's your compiler. So we can compile uh, C++ code, for example, once this gets all all set up for us. So that's wonderful. We we obviously need that in order to compile the port scanner, and I'm naming it Ky Sweep. That's a KY Sweep. Because I, I actually plan to develop, um, I plan to develop a port scanner a bit just for fun, uh, just a, a little side project. Nothing super crazy. There's just certain features I would like in some port scanners that you just don't have, and I, so I think building your own sometimes is the way to go. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, let's take a peek here at something. One uh, one second. Okay, so it looks like it's coming along here. It's just kind of 
it's taking its sweet time because it's it's installing and this is not the fastest emulator in the entire world it just gets a job done so if you have access to vmware feel free to follow along and, and do all this in vmware or virtualbox whatever suits you but we're just doing this for anyone that wants a, a really simple to use to run it anywhere type of emulator i think so anyway but um Anyways, we're gonna do uh, SFML, um, and this should be this should be the last package that we need. So it, it's again gonna ask us. No, actually, this one asks us for a number. Uh, default is one. Um, so I, I'm just I'm gonna put in one. You could just smash enter though, I believe. Uh, uppercase Y. We're gonna get this. Um, we're gonna get this lib SFML crap going what this is going to do is give us the um the multimedia protocol library that we need to check uh to check a port to see if it's up or not and this is really this is really nice because with this library we don't have to we don't have to like manage the sockets and everything all ourselves so this is a quick a quick glance at how a lot of other software gets developed by the way if you're not familiar with software like Skype and TeamSpeak then may the internet gods bless your soul and God in general may he bless you and help you somehow learn more because like everybody should know Skype but if you know Skype they use libraries they have used libraries in the past to develop their their software like for example most VoIP software did not write their own codecs. Um, most most VoIP software does not write their codecs. Um, some some do, sure, but um, you know, as an example, Teamspeak does not write their own codecs. Ventrilo, I don't think so. I mean, just the the point of this is is that someone can do something better than you. Okay. Now, audio codecs, especially the voice codecs, you've got Opus, and Opus is just like that's O P U S. It's a wonderful codec, and, and it, it's it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. You should not skip Opus if you're working with VoIP, or or you're going to be messing around with VoIP. So. If you can implement or integrate the Opus codec into your in into your world of voice software, perfect, beautiful, and I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Discord uses Opus. Don't quote me. It I know it uses Speaks or Opus, and it would just make a lot of sense if they used Opus because Opus is is just hands down the best. It's the most well supported, and it's just great. So the point in all of this is that Discord uses the same audio codec as TeamSpeak does, and it, it just makes sense for software companies and, and software developers to use libraries because we can't all just write an entire voice engine. And we, we can't, um, you know, we, we can't all just be writing audio engines. It's kind of like creating your own wheels and, and your own tires for a car. You don't do that. You, you also don't write an entire audio engine, okay? That, that's, that's the concept here. I don't have to write an entire, like, socket handling uh, protocol library, right? Uh, S, SFML has already got me covered. So I'm just going to ls and, and see what's all in here. We've got an install file. Let's see what is in here. Huh. Okay. So yeah, not not real sure what that is. Oh, I'm I'm already in here. So anyway, let's just go ahead and make a directory and call it ky sweep. I'm gonna cd into it, and then I'm gonna uh, nano scan dot cpp. Actually, no. I'm I'm actually going to get the snippet of code. Let, let me pull that up quick. Perfect. So now that we have this, what, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to w get this paste bin snippet. So that's going to allow me to that's going to allow me to fetch this over here because for some reason I I feel like it just doesn't want me to. Um, 
it doesn't want to let me copy and paste so fine we'll, we'll do it this way so i'm going to move this file over to cpp and then we should be able to just uh, g plus plus and then i need to I, there's a couple different pieces i need to include when i'm compiling so l let me just double check what those are too okay so what this looks like is this right here so we're obviously gonna put that there and then up. Oh. So here, I'm gonna give you an example if we uh, have the wrong stuff. So here we're just doing a G++ scan and we're, we're gonna try compiling. You're gonna see there's an issue. It, it obviously did not give us our a.out file. So what we need here actually is system, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter again. This time it will successfully compile because I need to call on the LSFML network and LSFML system. So if I LS, I've got A dot out. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call this. We're gonna see port 80 is closed. Going back to that whole Nginx that we installed earlier, we're gonna do system CTL start Nginx and that's going to launch our it's going to launch us a local hosted web server so i'm going to just type wkit local host actually and i'm going to cat our index file just to read this here it says if you see this page nginx web server is successfully installed so now if i run that ada out file again we're going to see port 80 is open that's because we are serving on port 80 and and there's connections that can can come out um well, not, not really on my server because on my Nginx web server here, it's in this virtual machine, which I don't forward traffic. It, uh, long story short though, is that we've checked localhost for port 80 and it's open with, with this C++ and it's super basic, super simple. You can see that we're literally just doing a, a quick socket check on port 80, nothing real advanced. We're just saying um, if port is open, which by the way, port is open is uh, is up here. And we're, we've just got the, uh, we've got the port, we've got the address. So super easy, could not, really could not be simpler. There's definitely, there's not much more to say, but um, what you could end up doing is making this into more of like a full-blown port scanner. It would not be hard at all. All that you'd be doing is giving different parameters, and I actually will be kind of comparing this to different open source port scanners just to show you the differences and kind of like how, how they're set up, what they do, and how they operate. So hopefully you stick around, stay tuned, and you're interested in this because I think it's just, it's miraculously awesome how simple this stuff can be. So now if I, um, if I W get local host again, we're gonna see that, um, you know, that, that this is still showing because we've not stopped our server, our, our um, we've not stopped our Nginx server. But if I do a system CTL stop on Nginx and then I rerun that, uh, that ADA out um, program, we've now got uh, port 80 is closed is what it's showing. So let's look at the ADA out, by the way. So we can see, we're looking at, uh, we see ELF, and then you know, lo looking through at this stuff, it's like, oh, okay. So yeah, this, this is probably what we're looking at here, just a, a binary. This is a compiled C++ um, beauty. And what we're, uh, what we're looking at in that binary is of course the compiled uh, scan C++ file. And now if I remove index.html and I w get localhost, we're gonna see that uh, it failed to connect, connection refused, and that matches right on up with the port 80 is closed. So obviously if we did system C, whoops, system CTL start Nginx again, and then we went to go to w get localhost, you're gonna see it's gonna actually get it. And then along at the same time as that, we're uh, of course gonna see port 80 is open again because now again, we've started that server. So this could actually turn into something that 
has like a, a monitor.txt file. So for example, we could have monitor.txt and we could say, um, you know, maybe ciphers.pw and then, I don't know, let's say 443 and then alert at gmail.com, right? Or I don't know, do, do a different one like myblog.com. Um, let's say that that one's listening on port 80. If that goes off, send me an email to uh, your host down at gmail.com, right? So we could just like basically have it to where there's these different domain names and then the ports and then that stuff, right? And then we could just, um, we could run through all these, checking them all inside here, um, just, just kind of like separating those all out. And then what that would allow us to do, whoops, what that would allow us to do potentially is to just pull all those different hosts out, check all the ports, and if it shows that it's down, like for example, the port is not showing as open, then we could go ahead and um, we could simply shoot off an email. Now, there's a lot of other things you can do with this awesome um, this awesome framework or library, I should say. So SFML is extremely powerful. If you've not used it before, check it out. And I will be highly recommending it as well as encouraging other libraries that are useful. But they also have a VoIP, um, they have a VoIP component, a voice over IP component. So <clears throat> yeah, uh, if anybody's not heard of CypherSpeak or, or me mentioning it, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, talk to you later. Peace.